Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, being on time. We are going to start our session right now. And a very warm welcome to everyone who is watching this live right now. Uh, welcome to Soak Living Room. Soak Living Room is a program that is under Soakability Church. We are a group of people that love Jesus. We love the supernatural. We love His manifested presence. And we are a church that's based in Singapore. All right. So if you're watching this and you are you know, situated outside of Singapore, you know, just type it in your in your comment section. Let us know where you're, where you're watching this from because we would love to find out, you know, who, who are joining us on this um, Facebook Live. And for those of you who are who might be, you know, you stumbled this, this is your first time watching this, all right? So this is Soak Living Room where, you know, all the pastors, we, we sit down and we kind of discuss uh, the topic of the month and, you know, we share our point, we share stories, testimony, and all we want to do is really just inspire and encourage people to walk into a supernatural lifestyle. All right, so this month we are on a topic called Encountering the Holy Spirit. You know, we started uh, last week with the first session. If you miss it, you can go back uh, to last week by scrolling down to our Facebook page, or we can go to our YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Everything is archived there, all right? And you can just kind of like look for the one that you miss. And we have a lot of amazing other series, you know, in the past few months. So, you know, feel free to catch up. Feel free to, you know, uh, share the videos. Feel free to even share this live. You know, our heart is to really share what we know so that, you know, we can really strengthen the body of Christ, equip the body of Christ so that, you know, we can see God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. All right. So without further ado, uh, you know, my name is Clement. I'm one of the pastors here. I do want to introduce my two other uh, colleagues. All right. So the first one, you know, I want to introduce someone, uh, someone, so this, this person, you know, very people sweet. find him sweet. <laughs> yeah, he's a very sweet pastor. It's a very caring pastor. Accommodating and sweet. You know, so so some, some people will say this pastor is very sweet. You know, yes. so let's welcome Mr. Sweet. <laughs> no, Mr. Sweet. <laughs> so welcome, Patrick. All right, Patrick, would you like to say hi to our audience? All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, good to see all of you online. And uh, Pastor Clement, thank you for such a sweet introduction. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh... You know, in <laughs> yeah, it, when, you know, it, 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 when when you taste food, right? There's many flavors. You got sweet, sour, uh, savory, spicy. Yeah. Um, and when you re really want to enjoy food, it's it's not it's not just sweet or sour or savory, but um. You know what is exciting is when you you have a mixture of all that all together, and and in life, uh, what makes life um, meaningful and exciting is there are so many flavors in life, just like there are flavors in food. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, and I mean the the fact that we we. we there are three of us here is is because each of us carry different flavors. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, so I'm the sweet one, right? Uh, and, and so so Pastor Jeff is the fiery one, fiery spicy. Not sour, sweet and sour, yeah. sour. Yeah. And and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and Pastor Clement will be savory, the salt of the earth. Wow. Uh, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um yeah, so well uh Pastor Jeff, you are the spice of our lives. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to spice our lives with a a, a few spicy words? Oh. <laughs> well I'm not a spice girl, like right? <laughs> uh well good. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Like uh, very surprising. Well there's always surprises from yeah, very, very Pastor Patrick. Like, uh, yeah. Uh well good to have all of you. Uh, yeah, so uh <laughs> I don't know how that thing gotta do with Holy Spirit, but <laughs> it's fine. Uh but uh yes. We are embarking on a wonderful journey of uh even 
uh, to get to where we are going, we need to do know where we begin. That's one of the very essential thing that uh, I, I keep emphasizing. Last week, uh, it's the first time I share. Like, okay, like um, history doesn't repeat itself, but history has a rhythm. Uh, if we can figure out the rhythm, then of how, yeah, history never repeat itself exactly like a carbon copy, but it always repeat different problems, success or problems or failures or whatever it is in a repeated pattern but in the different manifestations of it. Yeah, in different situations it will come up. So, uh, and, and the goal is that even to study history, uh, where we come from, we need to see what to look out for, what the rhythms, what uh, it's like the stock market or something, right? You, you see uh, you look at a chart. There, 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 there is a structure somehow that is happening. Like, uh, and so, um, if you un can understand the chart, you can understand what to look out for. If you can understand what has happened in history, you also can understand where you're going. Uh, yeah, uh, and I, I love history. It's one of those things that uh, because we learn a lot from history. We really learn. We p we in, in the last two hundred years, two hundred years. Most people think that uh, for uh, the God restoring the baptism of the Holy Spirit only comes like in the last hundred years. Uh, actually, that's not totally correct. Uh, to be more exact, to be more correct, it's actually two hundred years that uh, on a, on a worldwide scale it has been happening. So and sometimes as as us charismatic or Pentecostal, we only study history of people who speak in tongues. <laughs> which uh, that's not a very fruitful way of studying uh, uh, his church history or revival history or Pentecost. Yeah, uh, most of you when you talk about Pentecost, we you end up with Azusa Street. But Azusa Street is a climax. It wasn't the beginning. It was a climax or quite a couple of events. And uh, a lot of us don't know. Really, a lot of us don't know. We. We uh, we 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 come to a church. We people explain to us, but we receive it. Uh, uh, but yeah, at the same time, we don't know what trials, what problems, what are the success and failures that actually brought us to the point where we believe the things that we believe. Right? It is the same as uh, the sinner's prayer. It was Billy Sunday. Then it was moved to Billy Graham, who actually kind of put it in uh thinner prayer, yeah. Uh but it was a it was an act of the Holy Spirit revealing, I think to Billy Sunday, that like he was in a country he preached and there were three thousand people that I think there were three thousand people that raised up their hands. Uh and he didn't know what to do. He asked the Holy Spirit for wisdom and at that point the Lord gave him the sinner's prayer. And in that uh it became a system that we use but then leads you to the question, like, how do people get saved before that, right? Uh, if you talk about the reformers 500 years ago, it wasn't that easy, though, to realize, understand your salvation. It was days, y uh, uh, weeks, and months of seeking the Lord, asking Him for the assurance of salvation. Whether it's in a forest, whether it's in a hut, but in a place of contemplation and asking a lot, like to be assured of your salvation. It could be in a cave somewhere. It could be by your you, the most important thing is by yourself, figuring it out, allow God to be a sh give you the assurance of salvation and it come out and we realize that's it. But you know, what take weeks for um, what take weeks five hundred years ago takes one minute now as a sinner's prayer. Right? I mean that, that revelation took us 500 years to come to this point where we understand that we believe in the heart, confess with the mouth that Jesus is Lord and we shall be saved. Okay, good. And so, uh, to that's 500 years to compress it into a something to a simple prayer that when someone pray, when you hear those words, uh, you know that the person uh, is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, but that takes 500 years. And sometimes we don't understand where we came from, so we don't know the big picture. 
to get to where we are going, we need to know where we begin so that we know where it ends. Bec in, the in, the in the beginning, there was a garden. In the end, it was a garden city. <laughs> Not Singapore, huh? Garden city. Yeah, so, and, and uh, yeah, so I I it begins with a garden, it ends with a garden. Yeah. So, now, it's, it's very interesting. So, we, uh, and, uh, Maybe even throughout this whole few sessions, we can share that uh, so that we, uh, we, we know that these things are good to know. Because history has teach us a lot of lessons that we don't need to learn, we learn again uh, if we understand. Yeah, so uh, back to you, Clement. All right. Well, you know, when, when Patrick started talking about flavors, Spice up your life. Spicing up people's life, you know? I mean, actually, the Bible, it did talk about, you know, taste and see that a lot is good. You know, so, so, so I mean, it's talk about tasting, right? And, see, when, when we talk about that verse, you know, uh, I think one there are two key things we need to know, taste and see, you know? And taste is uh, experiential, and see is a perception. You know, so, so like, w when we talk about God's goodness, it's not just about, you know, seeing God's goodness, you know, because that's a perception, that's one part, but it's also experiencing ourselves. You know, and we know that you know the goodness of God is something really powerful. You know, because the goodness of God lead lead people to repentance. And when we talk about a supernatural, you know, uh, you know, we, we all experience the supernatural differently. Some people experience first, which is the eating part. They experience it on a very <laughs> personal way. I d yes, Patrick. All right, and <laughs> I don't know, Patrick, just looking at me. All right, so. So, so you know, uh, experience first, which means, like, for example, you know, some 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 of us might um, encounter healing. I, you know, I you have a back pain, someone laid hands on you, and the pain is gone. You experience it. You know, for other people, healing could be something you perceive, right? Because you saw someone got healed on the stage, you saw someone got healed when you lay hands. You know, and and we we need both. You know, we need both in a sense uh, whereby, you know, we personally experience it for ourselves and we personally also see people experiencing it. And I think that's the same thing about the Holy Spirit. You know, it's not just about, you know, talking about, oh, wow, the Holy Spirit is real because I saw people when they received prayer, they got slain. You know, that's why the Holy Spirit is real, you know. But, but it's also about our personal encounter, our personal experience, you know, because... There's, there's only so much a perception and, and so-called our own logical understanding can bring us that far. But a lot of time, it's also that experience, a personal experience that really rules us. But we also need to know when we have a personal experience, which means that what we encounter should be something that's normal and should be something that is being able to be replicated. You know, when we talk about healing, I, because I receive healing, I believe God can heal. So when I pray for the sick, they will heal also. So coming back to this topic of encountering the Holy Spirit, because I have personally encountered the Holy Spirit, I also know that when I pray for people, people can encounter the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, you know. Last week we we kind of talked about some of our uh, beginnings. You know, I, I mentioned that for me, you know, I I got saved in a conservative church, so Holy Spirit wasn't a topic that that was much talk about or taught in church you know so so for me holy spirit is always a perception in a sense you know like something very mysterious i see see him moving you know and most of the time it's either i see people praying in tongues i, I you know to me it's like oh that's a move for the spirit or you know people that they, they get slain under the power of the spirit or oh, that's 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 my perception of it but until i personally encounter it you know now that's changed the whole game now i know that I'm not the only one experiencing it, you know, because my perception tells me that there are many other people experiencing it, and my personal experience tells me that, wow, this is real. This is real. So I think it's important when we talk about encountering the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, we, we, we need both. We need to personal experience it, but we also need to also see this being replicated. You know, because God doesn't just want to encounter you. God wants to encounter everyone. Amen. So I'm just going to pass uh, to Patrick. Patrick, go for it. Yeah, um, I think of this. Uh, I, I think of this verse in in, in the passage, Second um, Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. Now, this is this verse is 
uh, commonly used uh, as 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 a benediction in in many churches. And uh, this is Paul saying um, to uh, his parting sentence uh, to to the Corinth church. He says, "The Lord, the grace of the of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all." Amen. So. Uh, so here, here in, in, in this uh, benediction, there are three parts. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Um, and, and, and so he, he, he is saying, he, he, his blessing for everyone is that we experience the grace of Christ, we experience the love of the Father, and we experience communion with the Holy Spirit. Communion with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, relationship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, 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 and that's a very interesting word that he uses. Uh, yeah, the word communion is fellowship, is the word koinonia. Uh, that his blessing is for us to have relationship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, a lot of times when we, th- when people th- hear of the word Holy Spirit, we, th- uh, we think of power. Yeah, we think, oh, Holy Spirit is is the power of God. You know, is it, the power to uh, to move in the gifts of in the in the gifts of the spirit in, in the supernatural uh, whole, uh, we think of uh, with we think of manifestations of glory so these, these are ideas in our head when we think of the holy spirit but when you look in the bible uh when you look at uh what paul says and what jesus says you know uh holy spirit is more than power Holy Spirit is a person. Uh, Jesus, J- Jesus uh, says in, in, in John 14 that when I go, you know, I'll, I'll send you a helper. That uh, he'll, he'll come and teach you in all things. And that's, uh, let, let me try to find that. Uh, John 14 verse 16. Uh Jesus says, I will, I will pray to the Father and He will give you another helper. He will abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth that the, the world cannot receive because it, no, it neither sees Him or knows Him, but you know Him because He dwells in you and will be with you. And then He, he said, I will not leave you as often as I will come to you. And, 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 and so um, the Holy Spirit is not just about experiencing the power of God, but is about it is really about communion. It's about uh, communing with God. It's about uh, it's about connecting with God. That that r- really how we connect with God is through the Spirit. How we connect with God is in the Spirit, and. <laughs> The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Christ, and these these are yeah these are titles of of, of the Holy Spirit that you f- you find in the epistles. And, and so, he, so he, he's the Spirit of Jesus. He's the, he, the Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of Jesus. So, so. It, the whole Holy Spirit is how you really have a relationship with, with, with God Himself. And, 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 and so, so when we talk about encountering the Holy Spirit, is 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 more than is more than moving in the gifts. It's more than moving in the supernatural. 
because all those are actually the side effects or the results or the fruits. The 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 the, the symptoms, but it is out of a relationship with, with the Holy Spirit that all things begin to overflow. And and that is um, that's really what uh, God is after. God is really after having a relationship with you. But uh, how does uh, how does that happen? That that happens when uh, when there is a spirit to spirit connection, and you you have that spirit to spirit connection when you realize that that his spirit lives in you and and as you realize that you, you acknowledge that and that awareness uh increases and your 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 spirit begin to awaken to his spirit that is already connected with you and that relationship blossoms with awareness as you as you acknowledge this truth that my spirit is connected to his spirit that i live in him and he lives in me that's that's really john chapter 15 Right when when Jesus say I, uh, I'm the true vine. My Father is the vine vine dresser. Abide in me, and I in you. And John fifteen, when Jesus talks about abide in me and I in you, John fifteen is right, uh, right smack really in in this discourse where Jesus is really talking about the Holy Spirit. Because from John, John, John chapter fourteen, John chapter fifteen, John chapter sixteen, Jesus keeps talking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus talks about. Okay, let let let, let me go there. Right. In fact, it, it starts with John chapter fourteen. Uh. So this passage, uh, these three passages, right? Okay, you need to know John chapter thirteen is where actually uh, Jesus washed uh, the disciples' feet. All right, John chapter thirteen is where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and uh, and and it's it's it's. It's it's where uh Peter got all freaked out and says, Oh uh Lord, you don't wash my feet and and Jesus says, If I don't wash your feet you can have uh you cannot be part of me. Then 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 Peter says, Oh, come and wash all of me. And um and that's John chapter thirteen. And 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 where P- Jesus J- Jesus uh, says, you know, I'm going away. And where Peter says, where are you going? I want to follow. So there was a lot of confusion uh, at John chapter 13. So at John chapter, John chapter 14, uh, uh, Jesus is saying, you know, I'm, I'm going away, but don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Uh, where I go, you cannot go. Uh and 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 then they they are, they are all they are all getting more and more confused and and Philip says oh show us the father show us the father and Jesus says no haven't you learned if if you've seen me you've seen the father because I'm the reflection of the father And 
and then in in verse verse twelve he says, um, Jesus says, He who believes in me, the works I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. Because I go to the Father, I'm going away. So Jesus keeps on say, saying, I'm going away. And when I go away, uh, greater works than these will you do. You see me do these greater works, but greater works than these will you do when I go to the Father. And how does that happen? Because I, when I go away, I am, I'm sending the Another helper to you. That's verse 16 where we, we just read. I, I'm going away, but I'm not leaving you and as often. I go away in my physical form, but the helper with you, will be with you in spirit. And then he says in verse 19, so it gets more and more uh, perplexing to the disciples. He says, because he says, a little while longer, the world will see me no more but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am, I am in my Father and you in me. And I in you. Then verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. And then he says in verse 21, If anyone loves me and keeps my word, my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He... Uh, and verse 26, but the, holy, the, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. That's chapter 14, verse 26. <laughs> so it's very confusing to all the disciples because uh, Jesus says, I'm going to disappear, I'm going away, but I'm not leaving you alone. You will not be uh, orphans. But, but when I go, go away and you continue keeping my commandments, my Father will love you, I will love you, we will make our home with you. So the disciples were like, they were mind blown. It's like, okay, you say you are going away, but then you are making your home with us Master, you don't make any sense. Teacher, you don't make any sense. You are going away, but you, you, are, you are going to come to us and make our home in us. <laughs> so, it, so it was very confusing to the disciples. But Jesus was saying, yes, I am going away physically. You know, all these times, these three years, you, you get to see me physically with your eyes you get to hear me uh, physically you get to hear the sound of my voice physically with your ears you get to touch me uh, my flesh when I go away you will not be able to see me hear me feel me anymore but I will make my home with you and my father and I will make my home with you through the Spirit, in the Spirit, that when we send the Holy Spirit to you as a helper and, and, and you have this, the Spirit of God in you, that Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of, of, of Christ is the Spirit of the Father. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, I speak. When the Holy Spirit speaks, my Father speaks. that you will experience the Father's love and the love of Christ when you experience the Holy Spirit.
Now here here's the thing that I I I learned over the years. It I did not understand it before. All right. Uh but I understand it over years. Uh, that what what it means when when we we serve a triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the uh, three persons in one, three person, one Godhead, three persons, one God. Be- because logically, it gets confusing. So when when I pray to to the Father, you know, uh, I pray in a certain way, and and I experience a certain pers- personality. When I pray to to Jesus, you know, I I I feel like I'm praying to uh, another person. When I pray to when I speak to Holy Spirit, like I'm speaking to another person. The the fact is. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is, although they are three different persons, they they are one, and it, and and so you are experiencing them as one. And though you may ex- experience a uh, different aspects of the Godhead, you experience them as one. And when you experience Christ, you are experiencing Him by en- encountering the Spirit in the Spirit. When you experience the Father's love, you also experience the Father by encountering Him in the Spirit. And the thing is, the problem is. Uh, Because of the limitations of our logical mind, we we tend to separate, segregate uh, things, uh, compartmentalize experiences, and so it is helpful. Uh, it is helpful for me when I pray. Uh, you know, when, when I pray, sometimes Father God. When I pray, sometimes. Uh, dear Jesus, when I when I pray and I speak, sometimes, uh, dear Holy Spirit, there's a different flavor, and a and a distinct experience when I address uh, uh, different uh, different persons of the Godhead. But whether I address uh, whether. I address to the Father, to the Son, or the Holy Spirit. It's the same God. He's the same God. It's not three gods. It's one God. And Jesus, Jesus says, the only way to the Father is through me. The only way to experience the Father is to experience the Son. And the only way to experience the Son fully is to experience the Spirit. And and so t- encountering the Holy Spirit is really to encounter um, the triune God in all His fullness. But we need to not limit in, in, in our logical understanding to th- perceive the Holy Spirit as s- just a supernatural power, a supernatural force, but he but he he, he is a he is he's a person with emotions. He's a person uh with, with a heartbeat. Not a physical heartbeat but you can feel the heart of the Holy Spirit. And when you feel the heart of the Holy Spirit, it's really the heart of the Father.
And, and, and so you, you really have to... You know, so I, I encourage you to go back and read John chapter 14, 15, 16 together. You know, and it actually climaxes with John chapter 17. But just read John chapter 14, 15, 16 and, and see how Jesus talks about Holy Spirit in, 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 these, three, uh, in these three chapters. Like uh, in John, John chapter 15, verse 26. Just now I read John chapter 14, verse 26, but this is John chapter 15, verse 26. Jesus says, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth that proceeds from me, He will testify of me. So the Spirit, what, what is one thing He does? He keeps talking about Jesus to you. He keeps revealing Jesus to you. That, that, that's, that's what he does. Then in chapter 16, Jesus says, when, when Holy Spirit comes, he, he convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And verse uh, chapter 16, verse 13, the Spirit of truth, has, when he has come, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he, he hears, he will speak and he will tell you of things to come and he will glorify me because he will take care of what is mine and declare it to you. And all, all things that the Father has, has is mine and I said he will take of mine and declare it to you. So Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, He's going to speak not of his authority, but the Father's authority. And he's going to tell he, think, he, you things pertaining of me that the Father has given to me. And, and, and so, so Jesus keeps saying again and again, when you experience, the, when, the Holy, when you have a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, he's going to lead you into a relationship with me. And it's going to lead you to a relationship with my Father. And so, th th there's, there's, there's no way we can truly express the fullness of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fullness of the love of the Father without having communion with the Holy Spirit. There's no way to experience the full flavors of the divine Godhead. With, without acknowledging the role of the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow is Ascension, uh, Ascension, Ascension Day. Ascension Day is uh, 40 days away from uh, Resurrection Sunday or the 40th day fr from Resurrection Sunday. So it always falls on the Thursday. Ascension, Ascension Day always falls falls on a Thursday because it's the, four, it's the 40th day of uh, Resurrection Sunday and Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday is always, always falls on a Sunday, all right? Yeah. And of course, Pentecost Sunday always falls on a Sunday too, right? So, uh, uh, and... Ascension Day is the day where, um, uh, where Acts chapter one takes place. Where, 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 where Jesus was in front uh, was was with his disciples. 
uh, and he they they went up to the Mount of Olives, and and then uh, that's in chapter Acts chapter one verse four, and that's where uh, he, uh, the disciples asked. Oh, okay, all right. Let's let's start from verse, yeah, verse verse. Uh, verse five. It says, Jesus says, John truly baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And verse six, the disciples ask, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he, and verse seven, he said to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in His authority. Verse eight, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they were still watching, he was taken up, a cloud received him out of his sight. He just, he just poof, was taken up to heaven. That's Ascension Sunday. Uh, sorry, that's Ascension Day. It falls on the Thursday. You know, uh, where, when the disciples ask, Lord, uh, is this a time where you're going to, <laughs> you, you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Is, is, is this the time we are going to see massive revival? Is this a time where we, we're, going to, we're, going to, we're going to see uh, the redemption of our, uh, our nation? Is this a time where we see all the injustices that we have suffered as a people uh, being reversed? Is this the time? And Jesus says, it's not, it's not for you. It's, it's not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has, uh, has, has ordained in His authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You know, we, we live in, in an age where there is so much injustice, there is so much pain, there is so much brokenness happening all around us. People dying, people suffering, uh, and we don't understand why, and, 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 and things falling apart in our, our, our nations, in, in, in the economic system, in the political system, things falling apart, and we, we say, God, why is this happening? When are you going to restore things into their proper order? When is all this chaos going to stop? Where, when is justice going to prevail? Is this the time? Is this the time where you are, you are going to make things right? God, you know what? The answer is the same. Just like what G what uh, Jesus said to his disciples when the disciples say is this is time Jesus say is is saying it's not it's it's not for you to know the times and the seasons where God will ordain uh, restoration He will do it in the right time but it's not for you to know but what is for you to know is that Holy Spirit is coming on you in power. And you will be my witnesses in your, <laughs> in your hometown. You will be my witnesses in the surrounding regions. You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. That, that, that this is the time that I am empowering you with my Holy Spirit. And this is the time that I'm making you my own. That this is the time that I'm, I'm calling you my people. That this is the time that I'm showing you my love. That this is the time that you and I becomes one. That this is the time that you shall walk in the greater works. That this is the time.
tomorrow is Ascension Day. And 10 days after Ascension Day is Pentecost Sunday. So the, the thing is, <laughs> a lot of us, uh, we, we, uh, in, in the back of our heads, we, 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 we have this idea, oh, um, uh, or the, uh, af- af- after, after Resurrection Sunday, the, the disciples waited 50 days for Pentecost Sunday, and, and then the power of the Holy Spirit came. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, but you miss out one big detail. And the one big detail is that for that the first 40 days uh, after Resurrection Sunday, Jesus was with them in person. And Jesus w- was dialoguing with them. The bulk of that 40 days that that they, they were having conversation with Jesus and Jesus began to, to reveal to them uh, uh, all the things in scriptures concerning him and, 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 and laying upon uh, a, a great foundation of the word and, and, and building a foundation of truth in, in their lives to, to, to help them uh, uh, have a, a greater found, uh, foundation that, that he is the Messiah and, and, and they had communion with Jesus that 40 days after he was resurrected. And then after that, uh, Jesus uh, ascended for 10 days. They, because they have experienced so much of Jesus, you know, uh, uh, that, they, they, that there's no doubt in their heart what Jesus said. And so they prayed fervently that 10 days before the Holy Spirit came in power and, and, and then the rest was history. And, 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 and so really to me It is, uh, is, it, is, it is this entire process that we fail to understand. And the truth is Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one. And we encounter different aspects of Him, but they are one. And one leads to another. When you encounter the Son, you encounter the Father and the Spirit. When you encounter the Father, you encounter the Son and the Spirit. And that's how it meant to be, but because of our limited uh, finite logical minds, we have separated the tree, and then, then because we have separated the tree, we fail to experience God in all His fullness. And so it, it really took God a few hundred years to, to help us enter into this fullness that when uh, when the evangelical reformations happened f- uh, 500 years ago it was a restoration of the word it was a restor- when when martin luther uh, be- be- began to 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 just p- preach about about uh, salvation uh, uh, by grace not by works that the just shall live by faith it's a restoration about the revelation of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. To, to, to just tear away all the centuries of legalism that, that has, that has, that has uh, been building up. All those man-made laws that does, does, does not help, that, that block us from encountering uh, God. And, and and so it was it, so the the reformation was 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 a reformation of the word that uh, a reformation of truth to, to, by by 
laying the foundation of a truth that we can encounter is grace. And, and then when the as when, when Azusa Street happened and and even before that and after that, all all all, all those uh, was was a, a time where 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 the Lord was reviving his church to the move of the spirit it was it was a revival of power you know uh, so the reformation was a uh, uh, was a was 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 reviving people in his, in his truth and word and and the son of of, of god and, and and then in 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 in, in the, with azusa street and the pentecostal movement it was a revival of a of awakening us, quickening us to the move of, of, of power in the Spirit, to encounter the Holy Spirit. And then the last 40 years, uh, was, was, um, it was a revival in, in, in the love of the Father that you, we have mighty men like uh, Jack Taylor, Jack Winter, Jack Frost, uh, <laughs> um, People who en- encountered um, uh, the Father's love and began to teach and and demonstrate the Father's love, at the Father's heart, and 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 all of us here are recipients of that to en- encounter uh, that God is is not a God up there, but He is a Father, and His heart is beating in our hearts. And so. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, the, uh, when, when Paul says that, that uh, may, the Lord, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. All, always. That benediction has been playing out in the last 500 years. The most important commandment to the Jews is the Shema. Deuteronomy chapter 6 is the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, your God is one. And Father God and <laughs> is just wooing our hearts tonight. And I think the word is, you know, to, to, to encounter him as one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one. To encounter him all his fullness that as we en- as we seek to encounter the Holy Spirit, we are not pursuing a power. Not like Simon the sorcerer, but we are we are we are being wooed to 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 experience his personhood in all his fullness, and he is wooing us into such an experience, such a relationship, to know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Uh, let's collect an offering. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to take the whole thing? Like, <laughs> praise the Lord. You're doing well. Let's uh, pray for our offering. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, uh, that, that's a very important point. It's like. Uh, and it's a very good refresher for all of us. Why? Because uh, a lot of us naturally kind of inclined to the Holy Spirit as power because Jesus said you shall receive power from on high, right? And so it becomes, sometimes it becomes a very non-relational thing. Yeah? Uh, and it, it's important for us to point uh, that back to a relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
and uh, you, you know now sometimes like uh, now there are two groups of people. Uh, so far, when it comes to talk concerning revival of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? That so far on the on planet Earth for years, there's always these two groups of people. Yeah, one group of people say, "Well, I am revival uh, because the Holy Spirit lives in me. I'm enough. Like uh, I'm not looking for a revival." Like William Booth says, that uh, famous quote, "I'm not waiting for a move of God. I am a move of God." <laughs> Yeah, uh, or Charles Finney says almost something to the equivalent also. Yeah, and so there's this group of people that says, Yeah, I'm revival, you know, because the Holy Spirit lives in me. Now, if you say that, then some, you know, sometimes people say that as in that, well, that's what they believe, but I need to see the fruits, right? Whether you live a lifestyle of revival, Saying your revival is one thing, but when, uh, whether you live a lifestyle of revival is another thing. Now, there's another group that says we are contending for revival, we are praying for revival. One group says the revival is in me, uh, we, I, we are revival wherever we go, or we are the church wherever we go, uh, or we are uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit wherever we go. And there's also another group that says that we are praying for revival, we are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So the main question is, which one is correct? Actually, see, the, the point is, uh, like the, the kingdom truth is always, is most of the time, is never dualistic. dualistic. What it means is, it's not an either-or question. It's, it's either he is right or I am right or I am right or he is wrong. Uh, and, and, and most of the time, but the problem is that the people that are waiting for the outpouring, when they look at the people who tell them, oh, I'm revival, I'm enough, that, and then they naturally think that they have pride because for sure they don't look like they are in revival. And then the group that says, like, well, well you guys are just like waiting for something that's already done 2,000 years ago. Now, uh, like when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are revival wherever you go. Now, in both cases, they are both true. They are both correct, actually. Uh, that that the disciples did tarry and did wait and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit comes and they now they become revival wherever they go. As a matter of fact, uh, from Acts chapter one eight to Acts chapter eight, uh, verse one, they 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 they, they, they were they were they were just sticking to their own people. Now you need to understand. That a lot of times we think that uh, how the early church evangelizes, they will go out into the streets, they will preach the gospel, and people get saved. Now that happened one time, yeah, it was the day of Pentecost where all the Jews from different countries they will come, they will come back to Jerusalem and they will worship God. Yeah, it's an annual thing. Yeah, so. And when Peter released that sermon, right, it's for every single person to, who understood. Because that's why Peter's sermon started from, the, he kind of gave a summary of the history of the Jews because he's talking to Jews. Yeah? And now, here's what you need to understand. Now, you need to understand that, that if you go out street evangelism, right, in the early church days, you know that if you say Jesus is the Son of God, you become an uh, enemy of the state. You will be thrown in jail. You will be executed, most probably. Yeah? And, and so sometimes we have this very interesting theory that they all become street preachers, going out in the streets and preaching the gospel, shouting out in the middle of the city square and Peter getting saved. Now, when you do that, you will get jail if you say that because uh, because the emperor himself, Caesar himself, is the son of God. And if you say that your God is the son of God, that means you become an enemy of the state. So how, may I ask a question, how do they preach the gospel then? I mean, you understand that we receive power, right? So perhaps... It is possible that when everybody see them and any certain person see them, they become the gospel message themselves. Not hearing the words, but looking at their life, demonstrating it, releasing power, people getting healed, 
or like, wow, you're a powerful time maker, man. Like, why, why, do, how do you do that? Or you, like, uh, you know, it's miracles, it's demonstration more than articulation. You understand? It's demonstration more than articulation. You shall be my witnesses. Right? Now, and sometimes we miss that. We, it's not just about the preaching of the word, it's about the demonstration of the word. The only shift that started to happen, now you have to understand, the first 200 years of the church history, and they are, they are going through persecution, you have to understand that. They are going through extreme persecution to the point where until Constantine comes into place, right? Well, well, Constantine the Great came about and they brought an end to a lot of those persecution. And so more, uh, some people who don't understand actually the total history, yes, he did some good. He also didn't do some good. Yeah, he did quite a few things that is not wise. One of the things that happened for the last 200 years when he came to the scene, he, did, he kind of like stopped a lot of the persecution, which was a great thing. It was a fantastic thing. Suddenly persecution more and more. But he also said this, like all the pagan temples, right? All the priests, right? If you don't repent, if you don't become a Christian, you, you're going to be killed. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so in the end, they have no choice, right? They have to... Uh, it's like a false conversion. They have no choice. Everybody has to convert. If not, they get killed, right? Well, what happened was he also kind of brought those pagan priests and some of them actually became ministers. This was a very unfortunate thing and the only people that can be laity or leaders, right, was the one that he appointed. Yeah, most of the time, if right, Constantine comes to play, right, uh, all the emperors usually from that point onwards, right, they employ or they select their church leaders to a point, right, that it bec Christianity, it was actually a house-to-house -house house to house and house to house thing, small groups of people gathering uh, or, or, and, and people going out to laying hands on the sick. It was a very organic thing to, until Constantine came to play where it became a state thing, right? When it becomes a state thing, it can become a building thing. When it becomes a building thing, it becomes a spectator thing more than a participant thing. And that is when Christianity starts to change from a participating uh, kind of thing where we can come together, we will share to each other, we will have all things in common, we will pray for the sake that everybody is empowered to a point where the state will have to elect their own leaders or where the emperor elect their own leaders, they'll select their leaders and so to a point right, where it becomes many people listening to one person so all of a sudden Christianity becomes a very spectator kind of religion where we go on a Sunday sit and listen to one powerful person. That's actually where it begins. That is actually where we kind of like how we end up in this place where it is still happening that, uh, that we are now we all have people that we look up to and that is fine. We all look up to people who we learn from and that is great. I do that all the time. I, I listen to them all the time. But, uh, but you need to understand that, that uh, where we come from, I'm not, I'm not, doubt, I'm not questioning conferences, I'm not, talking about, I'm not questioning even the pulpit at all. Because we still do that every day. We still do that every Sunday. But all I'm saying is this, that the New Testament church before Constantine was a very empowering atmosphere where everybody become witnesses to release power. To uh, they, they lay hands on the same miracles were following them until Constantine came to play 200 plus years later. Suddenly it becomes everybody looking at one person. It becomes a laity uh, uh, a system where we are just there to say only the laities can lay hands, only the laities can prophesy. And so it become a top-down kind of religion rather than a body-to-body, -body, rather than a, 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 a like person-to-person -person kind of interaction. And note that when we talk about the power uh, of our point of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it wasn't a spectator thing. 
And if you think that right now when Pentecost is going to come, weekend is going to come, and you are expecting to gather to receive power on I, you are absolutely wrong. God can pour a the power of the Holy Spirit anywhere, in any place, wherever you are, whether you're on Zoom or on Facebook. And all of us have come into this place where, you see, we are still functioning in this place where it is a spectator thing. And our false idea is that, well, we can only receive the power of the Holy Spirit when we gather. I love gathering too. But when the early church gather, they scatter. With, when the early church gather to pray and seek the Lord in one accord, they also scatter to preach the gospel. So it's a gathering and scattering with the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not just gathering and gathering and gathering and gathering. When the Lord comes back, this is my thought. He's going to ask us three things. And I think that these three things that uh, I, I believe that uh, Jesus shared about it, I believe that uh, is biblical. So Patrick can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I believe the Lord is going to ask us three things. What do you do with the power that I have given you? Right? He did say that after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall oh, receive power, you shall become my witnesses. So the first question he is going to ask is, how well do you do as a witness? To use the power to be my witness? That's the first question I would think that he will ask. Because all power and authority has been given to you, so therefore go... So therefore, wh uh, wh when the power that is given to you, then what do you do? Did the going happen? Because I think this is one of the valid questions he's going to ask. Well, the second question he's probably going to ask is that, uh, this is Luke chapter 18. Uh, this is Luke chapter 18. Now, this is very interesting. This talk about a widow who has a... a, a, a uh, who went to a, a, a judge, right? Like, like, who went to a judge, do not fear God, doesn't care about people, and the widow went and said, grant me justice against my adversary. And if he refused, so, but the widow kept on persisting and bothering him until he cannot stand it. He cannot stand it. Finally, he said, ah, I cannot tahan you. Like, I mean, uh, yeah. So, and, and so finally, I cannot tolerate you, and it's like, all right, fine, I gr great, great, I'll, I'll give you your justice. Now, here's an interesting thing that verse 6 that the Lord says. Listen to what the unjust just, uh, just says. And will not God bring justice to His chosen who cries out for Him day and night? Who will He put, keep putting them off? I tell you, He will seek justice and quick, uh, they will get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, Will he find faith on the earth? Yeah? Will he find faith? Uh, C-E-V, I think, talks about, will he find that faith? Now, how does that, the widow, got seeking justice, got to do with faith? I think that one of the questions he's going to ask is, what do you do with the faith that I have given you? What do you do with the faith that I have given you? Right? Uh... Now, so what does the widow have to do with faith, right? The widow wants to seek justice for what is rightfully hers and what needs to be done right, but it, it, when she keeps on persisting, right, she got a justice. It was the right thing. It, it, was a, it, it was justice that was given to her. And then what does that have to do with faith? That has to do with faith, I think, that, that has to do with what we believe, what God has called for our life, and what we even believe about the word is true, or what the promises of God that was given for us is yes and amen. A lot of us has a lot of promises from God that He has given us. How much do you do, how much do you believe in the word that was spoken about you? How much do you believe in the prophetic word that was given to you? Do you walk it out? Do you, do you, what, the, what, you see, when, when God released a prophetic word, you heaven, that prophetic word, that, that's, you see, the, there's no prophetic word in heaven. The prophetic word was given to you because there is heaven, the, in the heaven there is resources and plans and ideas, resources, 
to fulfill that word that God has spoken over your life. So heaven has plans, blueprints, and resources to fulfill whatever word God has spoken over you. Right now, when you be prophesied over you, when God gives you a word, right, he is, uh, you have to understand, that word is backed up with the resources, with the finance, with, 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 the, with, with the resources of heaven. You understand that? And when you believe it, you're tapping into the resources. It comes to you as a word, but it appears in heaven as resources that is already available to you to accomplish that word. So in heaven, your word is actually all the resources that is available. But we think that heaven has a word. No, heaven has no word for you. It is transcribed as a word over your life, but that word tells you what is available in heaven for you. That's another way to see prophetic word. So, I think Jesus is going to ask us this question, like, will he be able to find people who have faith to, 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 to believe exactly what he says, that you shall be my witnesses. The kingdom of God is just going to flow through you. You are revival yourself. Right? Yeah. So, I don't know whether I want to go to the third thing. I don't think like I have time to go. I, I, I don't know. But I, I, all I'm saying is this. Uh, we, we, are, we are very far away because of a system that was introduced to us. We, bec we, 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 we flow in this uh, 1,800 years as a very spectator kind of religion and it's still happening but in this moment in this Pentecost right it is no coincidence that we have in these two years right we cannot be participating in the spectator sport we have no opportunity to gather we have no opportunity to come together to seek the Lord I love seeking the Lord uh, as, a, as a body of Christ coming together worship in one accord I love that but I think God is shifting His people to understand that this is no longer a spectator sport. This is a participant. This Christianity is about all of us communing and participating as one. And it is no coincidence that suddenly all the COVID cases start happening again. And now we are in this phase that, okay, well, we're going to kind of like go through Pentecost alone. No, you're not alone. As long... He, he didn't say that as a, as, as a seven, uh, how many, 120, right? As 120 gather in one room. He didn't, now, they are in one room physically, but most importantly, it wasn't the one room physically that is the word that was most important there. They were gathered in one accord. I, doesn't, I don't need to be in, I don't need, I, I can be not in the same room, but in one accord. Not, doesn't mean that 120 of them squeeze in the Honda I caught. But, but, oh, sorry, that's a bad joke, but nobody get it. It's all right. And, and it doesn't mean a physical thing. It means that when we gather at one voice, we pull something from heaven down. And I'm looking, not looking at one physical place to cause heaven to come down. I'm looking for people who come together and seek the Lord with one voice, with one heart that attracts the power of heaven. And that's what Pentecost is. It is not one physical place. Gathering in one physical place is gathering in one accord. And you can be on your screen right now uh, during that day. And you can be on your Zoom or you can be on your Facebook or YouTube. We are, can still be in one accord because there is nothing physical about the day of Pentecost because it's a spiritual activity. And if it's a spiritual activity, it is limitless. So I just want to encourage you guys, as much as we're going through this, the world is going through a crazy time where we have to be separated again, but this is not the end. This doesn't mean that Pentecost is not going to happen. It's going to happen in a greater measure. I'm telling you that when we understand this truth. So I just want to leave that to you. Uh, I'm going to pass it to Clement because, uh, yeah, collect <laughs> offering for me. Uh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean... You know, I just, it's kind of, I'm trying to connect where, you know, Jeff left off and what Patrick has shared. You know, but when, when, uh, when uh, Jeff was talking about, you know, the question to ask, you know, I, I got reminded of this very interesting story and I can't remember who I heard it from. Maybe it was Bobby Corner, you know, but I remember it's one of the prophets. 
and uh, he was just sharing it that like you know he was in the study room you know studying the scriptures you know and suddenly an angel show up in the room and then he he, he he got a shock you know like the angel show up and then he saw the angel and he he and you know he could see like the angels wanted to ask him a question you know so he started to engage the angels and they say like uh yeah did, did you want to ask me something and the angel asked a very interesting question to, to, to this person. He said, like, the angel asked this, what does it feel like to have the Holy Spirit living inside of you? What does it feel like? <laughs> All right, and, and I mean, like, I mean, it's a very wild encounter, you know? But the point is this. I think sometimes we take for granted that the Spirit of God, the fullness of the Spirit of God lives inside of us. You need to know that angels has power, you know, but they're not filled by the Spirit. You know, but we are the one, that are the chosen one. They are filled by the Spirit. And angels, you know, are sent forth to us as ministering spirits for us to partner with. So, you know, I think a lot of times we, we really miss uh, the, the whole person of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, there I know there are two... Um, person, you know, you guys probably heard of it, you know, uh, the first person is Benny Hinn, you know, one of uh, Benny Hinn classic book is called Good Morning Holy Spirit. And and I, I love that book. I read it probably two times, you know, and he really shared his encounter of him encountering the Holy Spirit and how he cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And why is it called Good Morning Holy Spirit? Because every time when he wakes up in the morning, that's the thing he said. He will, he will wake up and say, Good Morning Holy Spirit. And it becomes a very natural response that when he wake up, he wants to connect with the person of the Holy Spirit. That he recognizes the Holy Spirit lives inside of him, is very present in the room, and he wants to recognize his presence. All right, uh, and that's an amazing book. I, I recommend it. Another book, um, you know, is actually by uh, Yogi Cho. All right, and, and his book is called The Holy Spirit, My Senior Partner. All right, and... He, I mean, in this book, he described the Holy Spirit as his senior partner in ministry. Whatever he does, praying for people, healing the sick, etc., it is always having this partnership with the Holy Spirit that the power, you know, of God doesn't just happen, but it's through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and with these two things, you know, uh, you know these two books. We we need to identify it because you know uh, you know we, we we talk about it last week. Patrick touched a bit just now that the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person has emotions. The Holy Spirit um, you know can be grief. You know the Holy Spirit can be quite interesting. He can be stopped. You know what? These are the two 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 key words that use in the Bible. You know do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. And I touch on the word you know. Um, Grief, you know, which means the Holy Spirit is a person that has emotion and there are things that we do that can grieve him, that can affect him. You know, it's just like Patrick is a person, there are things that I can do to grieve him. You know, maybe I, when he's eating ice cream, I take away his ice cream. You know, <laughs> you know and that, that might make him really sad. You know, and, and they were called quench and the word quench in Greek, one of the meanings is called stopping the flow. You know, we are not supposed to stop the flow of the Spirit. We are supposed to flow the Spirit. And to quench the Spirit is to put a stop to what the Holy Spirit is doing. You know, and, and that is one of my personal philosophy. You know, is that when I do ministry, you know, when the Holy Spirit, you know, is, is, is in the room, you know, people are getting touched, people are crying, people are on the floor, I'd rather not be the one to end the meeting. A lot of time, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'll hand over the uh, the the mic to the pastor. <laughs> I'd rather the pastor close the meeting. I mean, just my personal preference. There's nothing wrong if you want to close the meeting, but because I I want to have such communion, I want to have such a flow of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to quench. But yet, I also know the other side of the coin is you know we do need to end the meeting. We want to honor people's time. You know, we, 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 you know, people need to go home, people need to catch the last public transport, etc. So I, I do understand that, you know, on the other side of the fence, is that we, we need to honor the people and we need to, you know, close the meeting for various different reasons. But for me personally, I, 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 I just have the uh, personal conviction that I, I don't want to be the one. 
I know a lot of times, you know, when I do meeting overseas, especially uh, with kids, with you, when the Holy Spirit comes, you know, these kids will be, you know, on the floor, they'll be crying, they'll be having vision for more than an hour. You know, so, 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 you know, I preached an hour plus, the Holy Spirit came for an hour, so it's a, a long meeting already, you know, like it's almost like almost three hours, but the meeting has to stop and usually I'm the one that I, I, I pass the mic to the, to the pastor and, and, and I understand, and I understand there's, there is a need, you know, for, for, for the, the meeting to end, but, you know, for me, I just have that personal conviction. I, I do not want, want to be the one that, um, you know, quench the Holy Spirit, which means to stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. You know, and and see, just now Patrick talked about you know the 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 three in one. You know, the God hate three in one. And it's so interesting that uh, in Genesis, the two of them were present. All right, another incident that uh, another event where the three of them, Father, Son, and Spirit, ha- were present at the same time was actually at Jesus' baptism. Right, Jesus, you know, was going to be baptized by uh, by John. You know, when he got baptized, he came out of water. What happened? The heaven opened. The, ho- the Spirit came upon him like a dove. So that you have the Son, you have the Spirit that came out like a dove, and then there was a voice, which is the Father voice. You know? And we didn't know. The Holy Spirit is something essential for Jesus. Jesus was conceived by the Spirit. He was taught by the Spirit. He was empowered by the Spirit. He didn't do any miracle until he was baptized in the Spirit. So, so he set a precedence of how we're supposed to be empowered by the Spirit to do ministry. We're supposed to be empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Healing, prophecy, etc. We have to be empowered. And when you look at 1 Corinthians 12, it is called the gift of the Spirit. It didn't say the, your, your own gifts. It said the gift of the Spirit. The gifts of healing, the gifts of miracle, the gift of faith, the gift of tongues, the gift of word of knowledge, the gift, gift of wisdom. These are the gifts of the sp- spirit. You know, and and uh, you see, I mean, this is my 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 personal stand. I believe that when you have the Holy Spirit, you have access to all the gifts. And this is a uh, tricky things that a lot of churches kind of debate. All right, if you if you put this when I talk about the fruit of the spirit. No churches will say, yeah, you only have some fruits. <laughs> they will all say, well, you're supposed to have all nine fruits of the Spirit. Correct? No one will say, yeah, you know, yeah, Pastor Jeff got love, joy, peace, but the rest don't have. No, no one will say that. And then we'll say, that, oh, Pastor Patrick has, you know, the patient, long-suffering, but the rest don't have. <laughs> you know, then for me, it's a, the, the leftover three. <laughs> Faithfulness, self-control. You know, like, you see, we, 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 when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, we don't compartmentalize it to the, to the sense that, like, oh, you only can have this and have that, you know? But essentially, the, when they say the fruit of the Spirit, it is actually a singular. The word fruit is singular, which means the fruit of the Spirit, which, which encompasses all these nine things. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These nine things are part of the Spirit, and it's called the fruit, which is singular word. Fruit of the Spirit, which is, which is something we all supposed to carry, f- to exemplify, to walk in it. But then, when we come to the gift of the Spirit, that's where the tricky thing is. We start to say, oh, Pastor Jeff got the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing. You know, then, then Pastor Patrick got other gifts. Then Pastor Clement got other gifts. We start to, to allocate certain gifts due to a lack of experience. Just because you haven't seen someone heal yet doesn't mean you don't have the gift of healing. Just because you haven't prophesied doesn't mean you do not have the gift of prophecy. Just because you haven't got a word of knowledge yet doesn't mean you do not have the gift of word of knowledge. You see, we, we, we start to create a theology based on our personal experience instead of creating a theology based on the word of God. All right, and let, let's 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 go to the scriptures. All right, let's go to First Corinthians twelve. All right, let's go to First Cor- Corinthians twelve, verse four. All right, you say there are diversities of gift, but the same spirit. Many gift, same spirit. There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. All right, difference of ministry, same Lord. There are diver- uh, diversity of activities. But it is the same God who works all in all. All right? So, so key things. Same spirit, same Lord, same God. All right? 
But the challenge of our, the church now is this. We have no problem telling and agreeing among ourselves that we have the same Jesus in that for us. We have the same Heavenly Father that reconciles us back to Him, but we have a problem saying that we have the same Spirit. And this is where the teaching starts to talk about the anointed man of God. Any anointed man of God or woman of God, the great man of God, they all have the same spirit as you. You have the same spirit. That's what the Bible says, same spirit. We have no problem understanding the same Jesus died for us, the same Father reconciled us back to Him, but we have a problem believing that we have the same spirit. And that's what Jeff is talking about earlier on. Because we don't believe and not convicted and convinced that we have the same spirit, we, we don't operate the power of God outside the church. Ah, I'm not as anointed as Pastor Jeff. I'm not as anointed as Pastor Patrick. I'm not as anointed as Pastor Clement. But we have the same spirit. That's what the word says. We have the same spirit. You have access to the same spirit that's living in me and living in you. It is the same spirit. There's no different spirit. Maybe for a pre-believer, there can be a different spirit. You know, but if you're a Christian, you're a son and daughter of God, you, we have the same spirit. And you see, pastor and missionaries, they do not have like a senior Holy Spirit. Wow, the spirit more advanced one, more powerful one. They do not have a senior Holy Spirit. Kids and youth do not have a junior Holy Spirit. So which means no matter how old you are, down from a toddler all the way to maybe like a 99-year-old person, having the same spirit allows you to tap into the limitless potential of the power of God. We all have the same source, the same access, and the same power that is residing within us. That's what the verse says, you know. We can do far beyond what we can ask Thing of imagining according to the power that is working within us. Not according to a power that is outside of us, but according to the power that is within us, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, that, that is why I, I'm so passionate about you know, um, equipping kids and youth. Because they, they, don't, they don't believe something called the anointed man of God. In their dictionary, there's no such thing as, oh, you know, Pastor Clement is very anointed. No. They just believe that when I tell them, hey, you can heal the sick, you can prophesy, I'm just going to teach you and help you along the way. They just believe it. We need to be like a kid that when we read the scriptures and the scriptures say that we have the same spirit, we really believe it. I tell you, I spent so many years teaching kids and youth, none of them ever asked me, am I anointed enough? <laughs> are you more anointed than me? They never asked me this question. But these are the questions that the adult struggles with. Oh, am I anointed enough? Am I good enough? Is my anointing enough? Can my anointing heal the sick? Like we ask this question, and this is the problem. We start to put the gospel become a self-centered gospel. The power will become a self-centered power. Oh, am I? Am I? Do you realize the question? Am I good enough? Am I anointed enough? Am I powerful enough? Am I? Am I? Am I? It is not you. It is not about you. Get yourself out of the equation. It's all about God, the power of God. It is not I who live, but Christ who lives inside of me. The, the, the I is, is, is gone. Christ, Christ lives inside of you. The power of the Spirit empowers you. Sometimes the supernatural is hard because you keep thinking it's all about you. When you start to realize the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, your job is to flow with the Spirit instead of relying on your own effort, your own flesh, then the supernatural becomes a natural thing. We, we got to get the equation, the I, out of the equation. It is really about the Spirit, the empowerment of the Spirit. Amen. All right. Amen. Time to uh, take offering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, when, when it comes to uh, children, kids, and revival, I, I've been kind of doing some very interesting research about uh, revival that was uh, 
kind of uh, God uses kids for revival. Um, there's quite a few. Uh, and there's a quite a few that uh, a lot of people don't know of. Uh, actually, in the in the, in the beginning of the 1900s, there was a move. There there was actually uh, quite a number of children preachers. Uh, that uh, this is not Pentecostals. These are like Baptists, Methodists. That that there was this huge surge in the, in the beginning of the 1900s, right? That the God anointed like very young kids, and uh, uh, some of them are Baptists, and, and and they were given the mic to kind of share, preach the gospel. Yeah, and and, and uh, if you understand, like uh, one of the uh, kind of I wouldn't say modern, but one of the greatest move prophetic movements uh, in in history was the children prophet of Savans, the children prophets of Savans. Uh, it was about like thousands of kids gathering, and suddenly they start to s- like these are not uh, th- this is in France, you know. This is this is these kids are not well educated kids, but when the h- power of the Holy Spirit came upon them, right, they started to s- now they don't speak French, but they when the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them, right, they started to speak French and they started to understand French. It was so powerful, right, that when the French-speaking folks heard what they thought that, that they were educated in French, what they were actually talking about repentance, that you, you need to repent before God, that the people who understood French, right, which the educated ones, like, kind of, like, collapse on the ground and repent. Like, there were waves of children preachers that's going to the forest, going to different places. And these were poor kids. To a point where the parents thought they were crazy, right? Oh, the, the Catholic Church that's thought that they were ca- crazy and throw some of them in prison and torture them. And, 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 and uh, the, some of the parents thought they were crazy and throw them in the mental asylum, but they were not. The uh, and I'm telling you, there are some very unusual ones. I think one of the youngest one was, I think, this six-month-old baby. Like when the Holy Spirit came, and like it was just uh, this baby. It was in a cradle, stood up and started to prophesy in French. It's like six-month-old baby prophesied about repentance. Then when she finished prophesying, uh, went down to the cradle and s- go back to sleep. That, that's insane. Yep. That is crazy. Like I mean, there there are there are ones that is nine months, and there's the I I remember the six months one. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, like they 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 joined the army, the Protestant army. They would they would know they would know. Uh, because they were so skilled in world of knowledge, right? Uh, t- no one can poison them. Like there there was this time where uh there was someone that tried to poison the general. Immediately this kid, right? Uh, say, well, don't eat the food. It's poisoned by that man. Well, and the guy got caught. There were in our case where they poisoned the well, and, <laughs> and the kids would know what of knowledge about the, the water is poisoned. Don't drink. Like it is incredible. Uh, to a point where they went to the war front, the battlefront. That uh, there has been records that bullets didn't get through them. Bullets will be caught in the middle of their sleeves. Like. They uh, 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 it is said that they they fight lions, man. One of the most ex- uh, int- uh, that's one revival. Uh, then we also have another revival that is less well known, which is the Northern Ireland revival in uh, 1857 to 59. 59 is the beginning, uh, w- which is interesting. Yeah, uh, always very hard to pronounce his name. Let, let me let me let me. Uh, James McCulkin, yeah, yeah, James McCulkin. Uh, missionary from England went there, preached the gospel. Uh, the only person as a career missionary that she got saved was this guy who is a Calvinist. So when they managed, she managed to kind of like sit down with James and kind of convince him to the <laughs> that what he believed was like, oh, that's, that's something wrong. And so James McCulkin actually like, whoa, he's a teenager, got born again, uh, convicted, got born again, and sh- he was the only fruit sh- 
Now this missionary went there and the only person that she got saved, the only fruit that she has was this guy. But this guy started a crazy revival. He, I mean, he, he went to the leaders of the Anglican church and said, like, okay, I have nothing to do. Like, what should I do? I mean, and they were saying, like, oh, wow, just gather your friends. Uh, just pray, whatever. And so he really did it. He gathered his three friends, started to pray together. And that's how the whole revival thing started. He gathered three friends, they started to pray together, and suddenly more people started to come. More people started to come. More people started to feel like somehow, for some strange reason, they feel the urge to pray. And it become a, like, a phenomenon that is like, I think it's 100,000, and a lot of them, right? A lot of the majority of the 100,000, right? It's actually kids and young people. It's really unusual. Kids and young people. Now, how did that happen? Uh, because they were char- like James and, and his group of people, like when you have a prayer meeting, so, so they take a prayer meeting, they start to pray for their lost ones, people to get saved, asking a lot to visit them. And well, people were just coming for the, some strange reason that somehow it's like the Holy Spirit came upon the whole Northern Ireland that people feel like they want to pray. To a point where it become outside of the streets, where the kids, right? I mean, the parents go to the church and pray, and the kids, like, decide nothing to do, right? So they went out and asked their friends, hey, let's pray together since our parents are praying, let us pray. So, like, three, thirty, like, a bunch of them, groups of them were gathering, and they are praying for the lost ones to be saved, and suddenly, like, people were, bam, hit with conviction and stuff, and people were getting saved. And, I mean... The leaders got to hear about it, started to put kids on the pulpit to preach. They recognized what is on the kids, though. They recognized what is on the kids. And, like, things were happening. Uh, one of the famous testimonies was uh, this girl, when she was walking in the streets, found one of these prayer groups, <laughs> and she joined in, and bam, she got saved. Uh, she was convicted. She got saved. She came back. The dad asked, where do you go? And she said, well, I got saved today. Found out that she got converted. She was, he was so angry. He said, you now not going to go? He's an atheist. So you're not going to go to the prayer meeting. And so, and she said this. He said, I can't. I have to go. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I have to go. Like, come on. So she got kicked out of the house. Uh, so she seek refuge uh, uh, with, with the Anglican Church, and what happened was this dad got ill, almost to the point where he almost died, and suddenly, for some strange reason, the Holy Spirit, definitely the Holy Spirit, he knew that it was because he stopped the daughter from going to church. And went to the daughter, apologized immediately. He got healed. Like that is insane. In the matter of fact, Northern Ireland was the beginning place where people started to do s- Sunday school and the awareness of the need of Sunday school. So if you are wondering why, like why we have Sunday school, right? You can thank the Northern Ireland Christians. And they are the ones that actually... But it was all begin with a bunch of kids and a bunch of youth and, and started praying and suddenly the adults recognized there's power, that, that, that there's authority, that, that these guys are anointed by the Holy Spirit and gave them the platform to do so. I mean, right now we even think of succession and all the stuff, but <laughs> that is a natural succession that is happening there. It was a prayer movement. In the matter of fact, in 1957 to 1857 to 1859, right? It is not just in Northern Ireland. For some strange reason, there were eight, at least eight different countries that have a move of the power of the Holy Spirit suddenly falling on I'm talking about nation, cities and states, that they started to feel convicted to pray and the Holy Spirit come. I mean, if you know D.L. Moody, right? D.L. Moody actually went to the church and asked, say, like, I want to minister to kids. I want to minister to kids. And his leader was saying, uh, that's going to take a couple of years. There's a list down the list. You know. And he says, no, no, I feel like the urge I need to do now. And so what should I do? And he says, it's very simple. Go, you, you see the, 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 the beach there. Just go to the beach and just go start your ministry there. But don't bring them here first. Get them saved, then bring them here. Now, 
why he's saying that, right? It's because these are uh, uh, the, 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 the poor, the delinquents, these are kids that are swearing and cursing. They are not safe yet. They, well, the, 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 the thought was he can clean them up before bringing them to the church. But the interesting thing is this. For, for that is the beginning of D.L. Moody's ministry was he was going to the beach and preaching the gospel and, and doing kids and suddenly there was a wave of like movement among the young people. That's how D.L. Moody started, by the way. And some of us don't know. And I think that it's very, it's very interesting that I, I believe that it can happen again. I believe that a lot of us, like, I mean, we've been holding, like, for us leaders, right, we've been holding the fort. Some of us are older, some of us are younger, but then, you know what? We really do need to think about the next generation. You know what? If they make mistakes, they make mistakes, right? But if you don't give them an opportunity to, right, and walk alongside them, your job is not to control them. Your job is to walk alongside with them, to teach them. Yeah, and sometimes the, our idea of succession is control. It's not control, it's to walk alongside, just like the Holy Spirit walk alongside us. Yeah, they will make mistakes, but you know what? Give them an opportunity to guide them, not control them. There's a difference there. Sometimes our succession is we, we let go of it, you still want to control. That is not succession at all. <laughs> that is a power struggle, by the way. You let go, you still want to control, right? It's called a tug of war, by the way. You know how a tug of war goes, right? <laughs> yes, and so, uh, but it's very exciting. It's, it's very exciting that the Holy Spirit, I believe, is just going to anoint. Uh, uh, anoint uh, I'm, I'm not even talking about millennials. I'm talking about, yeah, included, but I'm talking about people that are so, so young, right? They, they're going to catch what God is doing. They might be not equipped. They may uh, not like five years in the Bible school, but bam, things are going to happen. Like these moves of God is going to come back. Like, and somehow it is very seldom mentioned about kids in revival. I'm telling you, there are so much more. This is just a few of them, you know, uh, the noteworthy ones. So uh, it's exciting times. It's exciting times. So your sons and daughters are prophesied. You have to understand sons and daughters. So don't take your sons and daughters out of the equation in this Pentecost. They, they, are, they are not... You, you don't think that they are not old enough to understand the power of the Holy Spirit. If you think that, you think you're young enough. Eh? You think you're, you think you're old enough. No, no you're, none of us are. Give them an opportunity to participate together with them. Seek the Lord together as a family. Let that be a family outpouring. They are never too young for the Holy Spirit. I, I just want the parents to know that. Yeah? And we are also doing a... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Kids prophetic. Uh, yeah, well, can I make a share about that? Since we're on that yeah, subject, yeah, correct, correct. just go for it. No, no, I mean, like, man, Jeff just talked about something that is really close to my heart, and I'm like, man, I can preach for three more hours talking about kids. Then you I'll know? collect offering for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but, but I totally agree with where, where Jeff is, you know. And you see, I, I, there's something that's on my heart right now is this we, we, what, what, how are we living a life that's living a legacy? How are we living a life that's, that is living a legacy? You know, it, it, it's like, man, I, I really don't want to go to, go to my grave with, without passing, wow. you know, what I've learned. Okay, later you pass to me. I got something more to share. <laughs> okay, okay. Mind, that one share too much. Eh? You know, let, let, me, <laughs> let him stand by there for a while. You know, and, and, and I mean, just, just a straight off thing, you know, like Elijah passed a mentor to Elisha, but there was no record of Elisha passing a mentor. And his mentor was in his grave. This is my, 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 my presumption. All right? his, his mentor was in the grave. And, and when, when someone threw a dead body, the dead body got resurrected. But yeah, people say, yeah, that's a miracle. But, but the point is this. The, I don't want my anointing to die in the grave. Yeah. I don't want my mentor to be stuck in the grave. I need to pass my anointing, my breakthroughs, my power, my mentor to the next generation. You know, and First Corinthians four. You know, Paul even talked about that. It's like, man, you got ten thousand instructor, but not many fathers. Wow, ten thousand instructor. Can you can you imagine? Like, I don't know the Paul count or not. <laughs> ten thousand instructor, ten thousand teachers, but but there's that there, there But you need a father. There isn't a lot of father. And and this is the thing. Fathers and teachers does things very differently. 
Father is about family, but teacher is about getting things right. And it's one thing to teach the next generation how to heal the sick. It's another thing to father the next gen- generation how to heal the sick. It's one thing to teach kids how to prophesy. It's another thing to father them how to prophesy. I- I'll be honest, you know, uh, you know, because we're going to start a, you know, uh, we're going to start a prophetic school for adults. But right, right after that, we're going to start a prophetic school for kids. And I'll be really honest, you know, uh, this is not the prophetic for kids. It's not like, oh wow, send my kids there, and then they can prophesy. Like, no, 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 no. The prophetic is a lifestyle. A prophetic is a connection with God. The prophetic is, is something that we need to father and mother the kid. That the kids, it's a journey. You know, so so there is no such thing as like, oh wow, you know, I go to this conference, I go to that class, I go to that course, and I'm done with the prophetic. No, it is a constant growing in the prophetic. And what the next generation needs is people, people like you who are listening right now. You know, who who need to rise up as fathers and mothers for the next generation. We have enough teachers ready. We need fathers and mothers to pass on the mantle, to believe. Every kid needs a champion, to believe in them. That, that is what the next generation needs. The next generation doesn't need just another teacher to teach them how to move the supernatural, but another father, another mother to work with them, to journey with them in the supernatural. You know, so so you know, so we're, we're uh, you know, me and my team are gonna we're gonna start a prophetic school for kids. I actually started this prophetic school last year already, but it was all online, you know, because there was COVID, you know. But now, you know, COVID regulations kind of has changes over the past year, and and you know, I I feel that when when you do face to face, you know, uh, there's a lot of things we can achieve. You know, we can do uh, prophetic in the creative. You know, like maybe a prophetic how to do a prophetic painting, how to do a prophetic dance. You know, we can do more prophetic uh, activation when it's face to face. So, so you know, just just a sneak preview. There will be a prophetic school for kids, and and it, 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 there also will be a limited you know number of kids that can come. You know, because uh, I'll be honest, my my heart is not just to teach knowledge. My heart is to journey with the kids. You cannot journey with the kids when there are hundred kids in a prophetic school. <laughs> There's no way. All right. So, so, so the project school will be kept to a small number and, and it's not intentional, you know, like, oh, I don't want to grow big. Like, man, I, I, I wish I can get more kids. But the thing is this, like, we all need to know kids learn differently from adults. You know, and we want to tailor make this prophetic school in such a way that it's a small group activation. Every kid has attention from 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 the facilitator, from me, from the team. You know, it you know this is not like adults where you can have you know biggest group size and people who can catch it. So so I mean that's that's my heart. You know that we 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 really need to you know uh, believe in the next generation. We need to invest in the generation. I, I don't know why I'm going to share this, but you know like one 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 of the most Powerful prophetic word I got um, from can I just say lah from Paul Kane, you know, like he 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 said, he said this to me, you know, fathers transform nations. Fathers transform nations. I'm not just specifically talking about fathers, but I was talking about mothers, you know. But but that was a word he gave me. Fathers transform nations. You know, if if you want to be a a world changer, if you want to transform nation, but you're not even willing to stop for a kid, you need to think about your life. All right, sounds very heavy, <laughs> but but I mean, it just came out anyway. But you know, we, if you really want to transform nation, start with a kid. The kids are the future. The youth are the future. They are the future president. They are the future teacher. They are the future inventor. They're the future. You want to transform nation? Invest in the kids. Invest in the youth. You know, and and I'm I'm in a season, you know, whereby I realize the greatest calling on my life is not to be a pastor, you know, it's not to be an item minister, it's not to be a prophet. <laughs> These are not the greatest calling. The greatest calling I recognize in my season in my life is to be a father. It's to father the next generation. I'm not here to train the next gen- generation. I'm here to father the next generation. When the Lord asked me to start a prophetic school, the Lord tell me like, man, look for the young prophets, look for the those kids that are highly prophetic. Because my job is to father the next generation prophets, and 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 I'm not playing with this man. I'm like really serious. So so just just you know, I'm just being being really frank. You know, like if you think like oh wow, this is like a great program for the kids. I just sign up. Like no, this is not just a program. Like I'm I'm treating this really seriously, and I hope that if uh, you have a kid and if you're interested to sign up for a kid, make sure, make sure, I'm, <laughs> I'm very serious, make sure you don't force your kid. If your kid doesn't want to come, don't sign up. If your kids are not interested, don't sign up. You know? 
because the last thing I want it to happen is your kids actually decide the prophetic because he's, your kid is being forced to attend something he doesn't want to attend. You know, I mean, maybe your kid doesn't want to learn the prophetic. Maybe, it's, maybe in a few years' time, your kid will, want to, will be more interested. We never know. But my point is this, you know, like, like, like I, I'm, I'm treating this really seriously. It's not just running an event for the sake of running an event. I'm really training the next generation. And, and I, I, parents, like, pray, pray about it before you send your kid. It's not like, wow, exciting. Let me send my kid. You know? So, so yeah, I'm going to pass to Jeff. I, I felt yeah. very, very heavy and uh, very heavy. Uh, and uh, so, uh, since I'm there, I'm going to finish the third one. Uh, the first question Jesus will ask, I think he will ask is, what do you ever do with the power that I've given you? The second thing he will ask is, what do I do with the faith that I've given you? Uh, the last question I think he will ask is Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. Like, what do you do with the talents that I've given you? Because that's what he did to the, uh, the, 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 the servants, right? He gave talents, he came back, he asked for, what do you do with it? And so talents will include what God has given you, your natural talents and all the stuff. Did they, do you use that to bring the kingdom? John Huss, if you know who John Huss is. Patrick, do you know who John Huss is? I heard yeah. the name before. John Huss is a, one of the, f this is way before Martin Luther. He was one of the first pe person who come against uh, the riches of the Catholic Church. Like, like you know, like, uh, he actually started to the first is the first person who started to kind of like protest against the they are supposed to divided it about of poverty and chastity with all the riches and all these things and and he he was put to death uh yeah he was put to death uh but the interesting thing is this like uh but it was too late the, the damage that was done there was the, he has a lot of followers and. It just rages on, like the influence keep on increasing even after he died. So 44 years after he died, right, they were still not happy with him, no? So they went to the grave and dig out his bones and uh, his bones, his remainder, right, and crush it and throw it into the sea. Hopefully it will sort of stop all the, this whole movement, right? But the poor thing didn't that like uh, the, 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 the 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 his enemy didn't know that when you throw into the sea it goes to the ends of the earth. Uh, now my my question is this: whatever you have done, whatever you have done to in the kingdom, uh, like after forty four years, will people still remember you? After forty years, they still won't have been so mad. <laughs> at John Haas, they dig out his grave, crush his bones, destroy him further, hopefully we'll stop what is happening. After 40 years, will people still remember what you have contributed and what you have done with your talents, with your faith, and with your power that God has given you? That people will remember you for your, what you have done. S that leads you to my question, what kind of life you want to live when you have received the power from on high. This is not a message of guilt and shame. This is a message of significance. The kind of life that we all want to live, right, when we receive power, right, it all depends on what kind of faith you have. If you are like the kids, which I learned, like, I mean, they never say no. They, they never think logically. They never do a co mental calculation whether it's possible, how many percent success, how many percent fail. They don't bring their past failure and success into the equation and make a judgment from there whether it will succeed or not. They don't. They just believe. They just do. That's why Jesus says the kingdom of God belongs to such as one as this because they can move in and out of the kingdom easily with their belief system. And, and that's one of the things that I learned. Uh, uh, yeah, so, um, I mean, to summarize the whole thing, um, I treasure relationship with the Holy Spirit a lot. I've, even when I was a DJ, uh, when I was born again, I was a DJ. I actually asked the Lord, what song should I play? 
or like you would think that nah, are you kidding me? Like you're playing in a secular club and you're asking God which house music track or which dance track, which chop in which remix that he will want you to play. Like are you serious? Why not? Because do all things in his name, right? You can do all things in his name, no? So I can I can clean the floor in Jesus' name. I can cook in Jesus' name. I can I can serve coffee in the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I can make pancakes for Patrick in Jesus' name, in the power of the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's just a matter of perception. So I do actually ask the Lord, like, you, you, some people call it foolish. How can God move in that kind of atmosphere and environment where there's like perversion, there's drugs and all the stuff? So it's, why not? You didn't ask. You just say impossible, but all things are possible to those who believe. So I would love to have the childlike faith because, sh- uh, like, you know, in, when I'm in childlike faith, I access into things easily. Like, so I ask the Holy Spirit for everything. I I remember he gave me this song, like, which I have in my, in my, in, uh, I have records, right? So, uh, uh, it's called The Holy Spirit by Eddie Amador. It's the original mix. You can Google about it. And when I played this, right, I, I'm telling you, I'm not kidding you, that night, we had people who started manifesting, and we also had people who got saved. They started manifesting. I'm, uh, I'm not talking about Holy Spirit. I'm talking about uh, deliverance. And the, 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 the song goes, Holy Spirit, shine on down. Yeah. And, and it was a house track, but bam, things happen. Uh, uh, and one of the... So uh, uh, I don't know whether Hubert is online. Uh, I, I was... Oh, I can't say the country's name. I, I was in a restricted country because uh, someone invited me. Uh, people <laughs> invited me. <laughs> like, come, yeah, to... And so we are doing a concert for, um, the, uh, for the president of the nation. It's a charity concert, and uh, the whole <laughs> kind of most of the government people are there. And it's a restricted country. Yeah, it's a restricted country. It's like, <laughs> and and uh, and and the the goal was this: yeah, you know, we can't play Christian music. Of course, you can't say put play songs that have Jesus in them. So I asked you, okay, I'm very familiar with this. Because I, I work in a club, I play things and miracles start to happen. So go, Lord, give me a song. Give me the first song that you asked me to play. Now, I didn't tell this to you, but uh, he doesn't know about this. And, and I, I asked the Lord for a song to play. And w- what he gave me, now some of you are going to be very annoyed and very religiously offended at this. He gave me a Green Day song. Uh, it's called 21 Guns. Uh, now, if you if you Google Twenty One Guns, you go YouTube. Is uh, the the lyric is One Twenty One Guns, uh, 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 lay down your guns and give up the fight. Is do you know what you're fighting for? Yeah, and so uh, it's actually a song about uh, anti-war. It's about a song that we lay down our weapons. We lay down uh, our weapons, uh, uh, so that we won't fight one another, so that we won't persecute one another. And that's what the, that country is kind of <laughs> well-known for <laughs> persecution. Uh, and, and I said, okay, you want me to play a Green Day song, 21 Guns, in front of the press? Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. I, I simply believe that's a relationship that I have with the Holy Spirit. I take it that if he wants me to play Green Day, some of you are offended because Green Day is a punk rock band. Some of you are offended right now. But I mean, if the Holy Spirit, I don't really care because I'm not, I'm not serving you, I'm serving him, so I don't care what you think. But if it's what he says, let's go for it. So, uh, uh, well, well, we went there on the day, uh, well, it was on live national TV, uh, and uh, well, the press was there, and I started to share why I want to play 121 Guns, because we need to lay down our guns, and, uh, and we need to lay down, and I started to share testimony about how a, pers- how a communist person got healed, uh, and, and through that song. So when I finish the song, now I'm not kidding you. Uh, I, <laughs> now, now president was in front of the front, but I did see him took a tissue and just wipe from yeah, yeah. So, well, maybe it's dust. I don't know. But uh, uh, but 
Now it's something interesting. So like I, I need to assurance that that's what I told a lot. Okay, that's great. I already done one twenty one guy. I play a green day song in Jesus' name. Right? I mean, I can fo- be foolish enough to do it, why not, right? And and so you show me the results. You tell me the results. Like I believe that like if this song I don't care, I can use a secular song and it's still gonna have the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a matter of who is singing it. Right? If you have the power of the Holy Spirit, what you release is different from other people. So I decide. Oh, so I would like. I mean, because it's on national TV, so uh, uh, like people start to recognize us on the streets. And you now this is one interesting thing. Before I leave the country, I, I say, "Look, I need a sign. I need a sign." So the interesting thing is, the sign come immediately, uh, and the last person that I met from the country, it was the custom. <laughs> The custom officer look at my passport, he look at me, he look at my passport, he look at me, and say, you're the guy that sing Green Day. I kid you not, like, uh, like oh, from, the, from, the <laughs> from a custom officer, I said, oh, yeah, I'm the Green Day guy. And he says, and he look at me and said, thank you for singing the song. Uh, it's very meaningful. Uh, and to me, I, I, I feel like, okay, great, that's an amen. Now, I'm, I'm telling I can't share a lot, but I'm telling you, there are p- like uh, now, am I responsible? I, I don't think I'm responsible for it. I believe the Holy Spirit to me is responsible for it. So I give God all the glory. The testimonies that I heard after that was like they were authoritative figures that people who are in high places that actually got saved. Uh, I'm telling I can't tell share to you a lot, but uh, some things that happen. Now I'm not the cause of it though. I'm just one simple person. I, I know that, like, I mean, if I sing a song about laying down the guns, I do hope that some of the persecution will come down. Probably not all, but some of the persecution will come down. I do hope that all this, something will happen, that the spirit of violence will come down in Jesus' name. Now, I'm, now, I'm just obeying Jesus. There's nothing for me to prove. All glory goes to him. And I still don't understand why a Green Day song can uh, release the presence like that, but you know it it did happen. It it did happen. Uh, wiping the tissue, wiping the a little tear from a uh, uh, president's eyes is is good enough for me. And, and you know what? That is encountering the Holy Spirit every day in your life. It is just a simple belief. It's a communication with it. That, that's what Clement is talking about. Like uh, Benny Hinn's Good Morning Holy Spirit. I read that too. That was one of the first few Christian books that I read. It's really about a very organic interaction with the Holy Spirit in every single facet of your life. Not just on a Sunday when you need to do ministry. Oh, shaka baba la da, shaka baba. No, no. That, that, you can do all things in Jesus' name. Just imagine you can crack an egg in Jesus' name. We all are too mature to think that we need God's help to crack an egg, isn't it? But why not? And that what, what Clement and Patrick is sharing is that he we we want all of you guys to encounter the Holy Spirit. I <laughs> see I can tie everything together, praise a lot. <laughs> and to encounter the Holy Spirit in every single facet of your life. And what Clement share is sharing is interest is powerful because I do believe that the way to work with the Holy Spirit is through simple faith and belief. And I learned a lot from the kids. Now, I can't minister to kids. Sometimes kids drive me mad. Uh, it's true. I, he, he can do it. I can do it, but I'm not the right person. You know, you give me one session, still can. Uh. Second session, I was like sweating. Like, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, be quiet. <laughs> Yeah, but he, he, that's his grace, that's not my grace. But, but I do learn from kids, observing them, how they, how, they, how they move, how they simply believe. It's one thing to encounter the Holy Spirit in Pentecost, but to encounter the Holy Spirit in everyday life is what this cause, this is what we are talking about. And some of you narrow it down to just encountering the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. I know on Pentecost it's coming, but that's an event. It's a one-day event. But I want a 365-day encounter of the Holy Spirit in every one of our lives. That's what we are after, man. If not, why, why would... Why? You think we are doing this just because Pentecost? 
this is Pentecost month, yeah, but we want it to be a lifestyle for every single one of you that is listening in. And that's, it will be the fruit of it. I want this to spread so that in generations to come, people still remember what I did for them tonight. What all three of us share tonight will change your life. Yeah. <laughs> Sound like a TV evangelist, right? Like, buy a healing handkerchief now. Well, one, one, seven, seven. No, that's kidding. Uh, yeah, anything else? <laughs> No, I think it's good. It's a, it's a r- uh, r- r- really good uh, summary. You know, I, I, I feel like one of the key things for sharing this topic, you know, is also this is actually also one of the DNA of soap. You know, to abide in the spirit, to be connected all the time, you know, to be aware of his presence. You know, that, 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 that is a reality that we all can walk in. And I think that, that's the reason why we're talking about encountering mm. him 365 days. You know, we, we, we don't want just ah oh, one touch on Pentecost, another touch at this conference, another touch at like you, then you're going from touch to touch, you know, and that's why sometimes the, your life doesn't see any much changes because yeah. you're going from touch to touch. Your Pentecost become pandemonium. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and you know we 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 we, we can't just wait for those moments when every moment is that moment, every moment that we allow. And we surrender our agenda and say, like, Holy Spirit, I want to encounter you. That's that's that very special moment. Some of the moments I had when I was in ministry school, it's not even in school. It's like in a room, in a prayer house. You know, it's just like outside of that conference setting or that school setting. There are moments that the Holy Spirit speaks to me, touch me, encounter me. You know, we 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 we, we really need to cultivate this. You know, really need to cultivate. This. It's a lifestyle. You know, it's not it's not like it's an event, you know. It's not an event. Mm. It's really a lifestyle, and and that is also the reason why we're doing the prophetic school. We That's are trying right. to cultivate a lifestyle, not an event, not an event. You need to know, you know. Jeff, don't know everything. I also don't know everything. Five years later, we will know more things yep. because we are also growing, and we will change the things we know. Correct. We will change the way we teach too. Yep. You know, may- maybe now Jeff there's something that you know I don't agree, and I have something that Jeff don't agree. But a few years later, maybe we we will see each other point, and we also change. Yep. You know, so so my point is, we are, we are, we are all on a journey to to learn, to upgrade, to go to the next level. You know, we we're, we're not supposed to be stuck. That's that's the key thing. We're not supposed to be stuck, and and one reason why we are stuck is we 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 we, we don't allow God to walk within us. And that's that's what that's why you know Jeff talking about this three hundred sixty five days encountering the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of all truth. He'll tell you one, no. Hey, you eat too much ice cream, maybe the Holy Spirit will tell you you eat too much ice cream. You need to exercise. You know you drink too much coffee. You know you spend too much time playing games. You know <laughs> I mean the, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of all truth. You know and sometimes the Holy Spirit is the best teacher to teach us about boundary and to get our life sorted out. I'm <laughs> being honest there, that like 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 and this is so random but, but I tell you uh, this is a true story, okay? When I was in ministry school, I think I think Jeff know, you know, I, I wasn't the best student, you know. I started my first few months like wow praise the Lord, you know, really hungry. And after that I start I started like a land gaming <laughs> in my house. And me and my friends, like my roommates, literally we will play a game called League of Legends, some of you might know, but we will play until like two AM, three AM. And after that, next day we'll go to we'll go to school, you know, and worship God while we're sleeping. <laughs> 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 now, this is a true story. And we and and, and I know like some people think that like, wow, Pastor Clement so so anointed, so amazing. But I'm I'm being honest. He's in uh, a league of his own. I was in a different league, man. I wasn't in the league of the Holy Spirit. I was in a every league day L O L L O L. Yeah, every day L O L. I was like gaming like 2 3 a.m you know i was like man one more game one more game we cannot cannot sleep you know so the the direction that we cannot sleep on a losing game <laughs> we need to sleep on a winning game you know and so all my roommates you know five of us all laptops on the dining table we we'll play and the next day we go we go to school and sleep <laughs> but what happened was the holy spirit the holy spirit really convicted us we not only stopped gaming we we delete the game we deleted the game and and you know and i mean i'm just 
just remember being honest and share part of my journey because because the whole, really we really need to encounter the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us to to correct us and to guide us. I mean that is the role of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit does it in a very gentle way. You know, it, it, there's no condemnation. You know, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. All right. So so I get, I think with that you know I think we can continue, man. We, we I felt I felt very triggered by the by what Jeff said in mm. a good way. You know, I was so yep. excited when we talk about kids. And investing in next yep. generation, I'm, I'm triggered, very triggered in a very good way, very yep. passionate. I can keep talking, but uh, I think we need to wrap it up, ready? Yes. You know, and you know, uh, thank you so much uh, for all of you uh, for joining us. So we're going to give some announcement, but for now, we want to go into a time of taking out our tie and offering. All right. So if you would like to give to Sokobliti Church, you know, uh, there are three ways to give to the church, uh, and they're all. Uh, through contactless payment. Number one is a QR code where you can use uh, your internet banking and scan the code. Uh, number two, you can give through a check payable to Sokobliti. And number three, you can uh, do through PayPal if you're living overseas. But I want to emphasize, if Sokobliti is not your home church, please do keep your tie to your, your local church. But even to so above and beyond what we're doing, we have been blessed by tonight's teaching. You've been blessed by our ministry. You know, feel free to 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 sow into uh, our church. Uh, we'd be really honored to receive them. So, uh, Pastor Patrick. Yeah, can I get you to pray for tonight's offer? Right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are always good. Lord, we thank you, God, that uh, that 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 you live in us and we live in you that we live and move and have our being in you and, and lord as we give lord we uh we give knowing that we are so intricately connected to you and and so we we give out of that that sense of uh of just flowing with you, and even right now, Lord, we just ask that you would would just prompt our hearts to give the amount you want us to give. So, so I invite you to just uh, ask uh, ask God, ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, uh, what, how much would you like me to give right now? Just ask. Uh, Holy Spirit, and whatever amount comes to your 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 head or or comes to your heart, just give. So we thank you in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. All right. So we are going to go through uh some announcement. All right. So I think the first one will be, yeah, will be uh this Saturday. All right. Because uh not what this Saturday. Sorry, <laughs> this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> this Sunday, all right. So uh, you're watching Soap Living Room, but you know every Sunday is our church service, and this Sunday we're having our church service at 10 a.m. It's going to be on Facebook Live, but at the same time we're going to have on site. So we're going to release the ticket. So for for those of you uh, who are in Singapore, living in Singapore, and you like to attend uh, the on site service, which is also a live recording, um, you know uh, my my uh, my admin manager is going to put it up. You know. On, on the on the comment section so you can click on the Eventbrite link and you can you know sign up all right so this month we are talking about Pentecost month like what Pastor Jeff saying you know right so we are really talking about encountering the Holy Spirit we're going to talk about the person of the Holy Spirit we are talking about being empowered by the Holy Spirit all right you can't talk about Pentecost we're not talking about the Holy Spirit mm. <laughs> you know and interestingly you cannot be a Christian without the Holy Spirit also all right because it's a spirit that that declares that Jesus Christ is Lord Right, so so the event bright link is uh, available right now. So for those of you, you know, uh, who wants is if somebody like below me and in the comment section, all right. So you can just kind of uh, click on it and key in a password and you can get a ticket. Just want to emphasize uh, about the ticketing, all right. Uh, we we have government regulation to abide to. So please do not sign up a ticket for your friends. You can pass this link to your friend for them to sign up because every ticket needs to be traceable to an uh, actual person's email and contact. All right, so so please do not sign up like oh you know, like I have a friend called Patrick. I will put Patrick. You know, don't sign up for them. All right, like you can send them the link. Okay, uh, we 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 need to abide through all the government regulations. So we we seek your uh, kind understanding and help us with that. And at the same time, you know, uh, if you cannot make it last minute, just release the ticket because we are on a limited uh, seating arrangement. All right. 
So I think uh, that's all for this. You know, uh, so next Wednesday we're going to continue our soak living room. All right, we're going to continue the encountering the Holy Spirit. You know, and and it is it's so interesting because even in soak living room we are led by the Spirit. You know, a lot of times we plan to share certain anger, but it didn't happen. You know, it's really Holy Spirit, the Spirit of all truth leading us and guiding us throughout the whole session and really, you know, sharing what's on our heart and sharing what, what is needed. All right. So there'll be encountering the Holy Spirit, Soak Living Room every Wednesday at uh, 7 30 p.m. on Facebook Live. Okay. So keep an eye on that. Next one will be the Soaking and Revival Day. Soaking and Revival Day. All right. It will be on the 26th. 26th of May, all right? Yes, test, testing my eyesight. 26th of May, <laughs> all right? And it is from 2 p.m., <laughs> all right? So 26th of May, 2 p.m., uh, we have this Soaking and Revival uh, Day, all right? The last time we have this. Uh, so we're trying to do this once a month and see how it goes. And, you know, uh, we had one session uh, last month and it was powerful. It was so powerful. Like I said, I didn't want to quench the spirit. So we continue <laughs> and continue yep. until it's like, 11 past 11 p.m. and we're like oh no we got to end because people need to go home our server also need to clean up the place so we have to end it you know uh, unfortunately but it was still a very powerful uh, evening many people were touched were blessed and many people already encounter you know the power of God the presence of, of Jesus so we decided to try uh, on 26th of May which is on uh, which is actually a public holiday which is a visa visa day holiday in Singapore you know I'm sure most of our Christian friends are celebrating that. So, you know, feel free to uh, join us, all right? Uh, we'll put this link up tomorrow on our social media, okay? So the link for this Soaking and Revival will be available tomorrow on our social media. So keep track of our social media. You can find the link tomorrow. We're just going to release the link for this Sunday so to avoid any form of confusion, all right? So, um, you know, this is going to be powerful, all right? So, the next one is the Sokovity School of the Prophetic. All right, we're very excited. You know, uh, we're here to uh, really not just to equip, you know, by use of what we're here to cultivate what is a supernatural lifestyle, what is a prophetic culture, what is a prophetic lifestyle. So, this Sokovity School, School of the Prophetic, this is our first one we're doing. All right, so uh, the details and the date are on the poster. All right, I'm going to pass the time to Jeff to share more because he is the lead trainer. I'm just going to do a special segment with some kids. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, so it's going to be a continuation and a momentum. So there's one, two, three, and four. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of things to talk about in the prophetic. Uh, and now I realize that the the on-site tickets are, I think. Already, yeah. But but you still can. Uh, we're gonna do a Zoom room. We're gonna do a Zoom room for uh, for offsite uh, the online uh, sessions. But note that your online sessions, we're still gonna do some activations. Uh, of course, on site will be easier. But uh, but for those of you who like uh, right now, unfortunately, it's full for on site because our you gotta pray for our place now because our place is small. <laughs> And uh, yeah, uh, so apparently we pray for the upstairs to move, and they are actually moving. Yeah, <laughs> it's very dangerous. So yeah, it's very I dangerous. mean, yeah, we pray that day, and uh, two days later, the we have the information is moving. <laughs> but then the problem is like now, like <laughs> it's more like the budget thing that yep, we're trying yep, to figure so out. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, the on-site is no longer available, uh, but you can. You can kind of um, apply for the online one, yeah. So don't don't worry about it. Uh, we we're still gonna kind of uh, give the M like uh, well after every session we we uh, gonna kind of give the MP3s to people who have missed them, yeah. So but you gotta give us a heads up whether your uh, uh, what sessions you miss and all this stuff. So uh, we the the MP3s will be make uh, will be available so that you guys can revise also. So that's one of the things that we we talk about. Uh, so yes, it's still uh, you can apply, but it's gonna be online sessions. Thank you so much. Yep. All right. So you know we also mentioned after this we have a, s a school. 
for the kids. So there'll be a secondary school of the prophetic for kids. All right. So uh, I, uh, we don't have all the details firm up yet, but we're in the midst of it, you know. But uh, we will love to share more information when we start to confirm things. But you know, just keep keep a look up, you know. Uh, I think we we are really uh, serious in really equipping, you know, the the different generations, you know, from from the old man dream dreams to the young <laughs> young men see visions. All right, we are really here to equip every generation. So you know, no one is left out. You know, I think for me, I mentioned before, one my heart is to see you know uh, a supernatural family, not a supernatural father and mother, but the kids don't do anything, or the other way around, a supernatural kids, but the father and mother don't do anything. It's a supernatural family, a family of revivalists that no matter where they go, you know, they set people on fire with the passion and the power of the, of the gospel. Mm-hmm. All right. So, that, so that's definitely something that I'm, I'm, I've been talking about and we were excited. Uh, we, 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 we have, you know, an uh, 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 amazing team to run the kids se- session. All right. But it will be on site. You know, I know some people ask about uh, online. You know, uh, we will see how we can bring that online, you know, but uh, just pray for us, you know. Um, it's, it's a very really exciting season we're in. All right. I, I I think we don't have time for ministry, but yep. maybe tonight we'll do a bit different. Maybe we'll answer one or two questions. Yeah. Then within the last ten minutes, I think there's a more effective way of doing. Uh, because I did see Cookie ask a question. Like, let me answer that question. Yeah. Let me answer the question first. Then, uh, if we can answer one or two more questions before the night ends, it'll be more effective. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Jeff, what is your conclusion again about the two camps who concerning opposing mindset about revival? One that talks about uh, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come, uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and the other group that says the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, that the I am revival, uh, the, I, the Holy Spirit is in me, everywhere I go, I am, uh, I am revival. The other group is praying for revival. Now, here's the thing. Uh, the the group that says I am revival, right? You need to give grace to people who has not have the same revelation as you yet. It doesn't mean that you are ahead of them, that you understand the truth and the power of the Holy Spirit, that you should condemn the group that is waiting for a revival and says and they not do nothing about their life. Well, maybe you should give grace and try to share your revelation with them. You are, you are ahead. It doesn't mean that you keep running by yourself. It's also your responsibility to share what you know to your brother and sister and give grace to them. Just because they are slower than you, uh, that doesn't mean that you leave them behind. So, but to the group that uh, who is saying, well, we are contending for a move of God, for revival, and you say that I am revival, like like William Booth, right? Like uh, I'm not waiting for a move of God. I am a move of God, and sometimes it's too extract that like you do not understand, and you say, well, that's pride. That's pride, right? And but but if you look into a person's life, uh, you judge by the fruits. And if this person say that I'm not looking for a move of God, I am the move of God, and suddenly you really see in their life that they really have the fruits. You judge by the fruits. They they are really effective, and they and you see all these signs and wonders. Maybe you they know something that you don't know yet, and maybe it's a good idea for you to go and ask them, how can I catch up to this? So your job, uh, as you look at them and you see those fruits, right, is to say they probably have a revelation that I have not catch yet. So be humble enough to learn from them. So I would. This is the two advice I would give. This is the advice I would give to the two groups. Hopefully, it helps. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, any th- any other questions? If no other questions, then that will. Uh, yeah, we're just going to stay online just for a couple yeah. of minutes. If there's no question, we're just going to uh, kind of like close the session, wrap yep. it up, ready. Yeah. Maybe you got requests. Yeah. Mm. Any requests or <laughs> thank you a lot. No questions, no questions is good. Like it means that you all understand everything. <laughs> thank you a lot. I mean, if you don't have, we can close. It doesn't yep, yep. necessarily. It's okay. We'll we just wait, wait for a while. Yep. <sighs> Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. No questions. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's, That's good. great. Yeah. That's good. Welcome, everybody. All right, maybe maybe we just pray. Yeah. Pray pray mm. for the online crowd and and, and we're just going to just uh, mm. like wrap it up, you mm. know. So um, yeah, Patrick, would you like to would you like to pray for everyone? Sure. Thank you, Jesus. So I bless you right now in Jesus' name for your heart to awaken to the love of the Father all over right now. I bless you that your spiritual senses awaken the eyes of your heart, the ears of your spirit. Awaken in Jesus' name to hear him, to see him all over right now, to feel him, to sense him all over right now in Jesus' name. That, that uh, all mental and emotional clutter flush out in Jesus' name. Every blockage clear. The clear flow, rivers of living waters flow all over you in Jesus' name. Rivers of living waters flow all over you right now. The rivers of living waters flow all over you within you, flushing out every emotional and mental clutter now. Clearing all confusion and bringing clarity to your spirit, mind, soul, and heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Amen. thank you. Thank you, Pastor Patrick. What a great, powerful prayer to end tonight's session. All right, so for those of you um, uh, who are uh, in Singapore, if you want to get a ticket, the link is there. You can just uh, get a ticket for this Sunday. All right, and for those of you who are overseas, you can catch us on Facebook Live. All right, so we'll be uh, our service is at 10 a.m. on Sunday. So that's the next event to check out and keep a lookout on. All right, so with that, Bless you all. Have a great night and we'll see you on Sunday. God bless you. Bye. 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 Good night.